In the depths of Virgin Islands waters is where you will find me. Beneath brilliant island oceans and seas, where life in exquisite beauty and variety manifests. A breathtaking number of marine species make our island barriers between the Atlantic Ocean and the Caribbean Sea their home. The waters of the Virgin Islands are a cradle of life with so many diverse thousands. Welcome to the Happy Islanders Underwater Adventure. I am Carl Hallwood, the Happy Islanders. And these are my underwater adventures in the Virgin Islands. The mission to discover nature and increase and inspire the general knowledge, awareness and education of residents and visitors regarding the uniqueness and diversity of the Virgin Islands environment and the impact of human beings. There is a modern cliché, give a man a fish and he eats for a day. But if you teach a man to fish, he eats for a lifetime. The evidence then would suggest that mankind probably has not yet learned how to fish. We evolved from hunter-gatherers to become farmers, then domesticators of animals, including some fish. In the ocean, however, we remain hunters. A large school of barjacks gathers in a feeding aggregation with a few blue tang and black durgon. Whales break among nearshore rocks, tearing free or loosening the hold of algae, mollusks, and various creatures for the fish to eat. Their back and forth dash is timed perfectly between wave breaks. Waves, incidentally, that also wash loose any oil, litter, or other detritus left behind by man. In slightly deeper waters, a feeding aggregation of mostly blue tang, doctorfish and ocean surgeon fish graze the ocean floor and raid the algae and grass farms of damselfish. These farms and grazing areas, critical to the diet of many fish, are extremely vulnerable to pollutants and runoff from land. The blue tang and their kin are also messy eaters. They cast scraps and any accompanying pollutants to the whims of the currents. The water tor scrap may feed other marine life. Some scrap may be fortunate enough to find a surface to regrow on, thus spreading its life essence. Pollutants, too, may find anchor and thus continue to propagate through the food chain. The Virgin Islands near shore reefs are home to hundreds of species of commercially fished marine life, such as these tomtates.
The reef is the goose that lays the golden eggs. In a world of over 7 billion human mouths to feed, the health of tropical reefs plays a paramount role in maintaining the planetary food supply. Hi, when it comes to wildlife, just ask my mom. Yeah, we're double trouble in the jungle gym. But for real tropical nature adventure, we, we watch the Happy Islanders Underwater in Nature videos. Found by native islander in the St. Thomas Virgin Islands. It's the most biodiverse region in the USA. Cool! cool. What does biodiverse mean? I don't know. Freaky pop. Yes! Biodiversity. It is the hallmark of life in the Virgin Islands. It is the sheer variety of form giving function to nature. From the coral depths to the tiniest of Earth's creatures. Riding the waves or sailing the tree-lined airways. Life sings its differences in harmony. According to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the U.S. Caribbean islands of Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands contain the highest biodiversity of life in the USA. Nowhere is this more evident than at Mandal Bay, St. Thomas. The featured marine organism for this episode is the stoplight parrotfish in initial phase. In the middle part of its life, also called the initial phase, this common reef inhabitant is quite easy to identify. Nothing else comes with that bright red belly topped with reddish brown or black and white checkerboard. Stoplights of all ages and sizes nibble on the algae, seaweeds, grasses, and other organisms that attach to reefs. They are very important as grazers that prevent coral from being smothered by overgrowth or felled by parasites and infection. Parrotfish play another vital role for the ecosystem and tourism. They poop white coral sand. <laughs> when parrotfish graze, they also nibble off bits and pieces of the coral's limestone skeletal structure, recycling it through their gut into powdery sand. Waiting below our relieved stoplight parrotfish are numerous organisms, including this red band coral shrimp, that are anxious to clean the new sand and make it ready to wiggle between your toes. Dives of mackerel and men often go astray. On this wet and watery day, a spotted spiny lobster has had it with the horde of paparazzi divers.
one way to think of coral reefs is as multi-story luxury apartment complexes complete with shopping centers, spas, organic markets, parks, playgrounds, housekeepers, and tenants of mixed races, ages, and sizes. legacy. It is what we do and what we leave behind. Poor fishing practices and overfishing are only a small part of the story if we continue to trash the oceans. Divers try to pick up litter when they find it. The most innocuous of ocean trash can damage reefs by banging about in wave action and storm. Contact with life-encrusted litter can also spread disease to coral. All litter must be checked for marine organisms before removal. This is time-consuming and presents abnormal risks for divers. In a no-touch environment, there is a risk of contact with potentially harmful organisms from fire coral and fireworms to eels, stingrays, and more. On May 17, 2016, the United States Fish and Wildlife Service testified before the U.S. Senate that abandoned and derelict vessels are a third highly visible type of marine debris and may pose an immediate or future threat to wildlife and wildlife habitat. Litter is a huge problem, but some fishing choices can be as damaging. Young nurse sharks are a common bycatch of pot fishing. They regularly enter fish traps and eat the entire catch. Angry fishers facing financial loss often keep these sharks for market rather than release them to raid more pots. Nurse sharks are anchor tenants of VI coral reefs, and today's food choices can make or break our grandchildren's diets. The reef structure is pockmarked with many floors of condominium units. We will let this rock beauty guide us down a few levels to the unit occupied by the Caribbean spiny lobster. The Caribbean spiny lobster is the most sought after and served local lobster on VI menus and it too has begun to feel man's stress on the reef ecosystem. We have a choice. Kill the goose that lays the golden egg, or tend to and care for it. Livelihoods, economies, and hungry households worldwide depend upon marine harvesting, so both industry and consumer must play roles in restoring the ocean stockpile of life. Many such efforts actually are underway in the islands. In upcoming episodes, we will show you easy, local choices that may allow Virgin Islanders to have their fish and eat them too.